1984, one of the most confusingly named Polish avant-garde jazz ensembles released two albums on the Pole Jazz label. I am talking about the heavy metal sextet. Yes, um, not metal at all, in fact. And from their eponymous first of two albums released that year, the track Casa Dwarich, which translates to a healthy cash register. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> the martial quality of that drumming well kind of like martial yeah, it's got that snare but it's it's also kind of like jerky you know and now we go right into the free kind of uh loose uh walking bass and It's like we started out with that kind of jerky sort of marching band, that kind of like fussy marching band, stop, start, you know, uh, like almost like they couldn't quite find the right starting beat because like, and uh, and, and then we go like, for, it, it's almost like they didn't want to be confined. They didn't want to be single file. They just all wanted to roam kind of wild. <laughs> Okay, we got like four really powerful elements here just colliding, creating kind of like a sonic whirlwind of, of instruments. We, we got the, uh, the the piano kind of playing like these light, you know, notes and such. We got the, uh, you know, the, uh, the trumpet, you know, just kind of like billowing through it all. We got the uh, walking bass line, really crisp, really, you know, stand-up bass. And we've got the kind of misty drumming. <laughs> trumpet work. Ah, I hear that, that ascent on the piano there playing against the trumpet, yeah. Uh, trumpet played by uh, Waldemar uh, Szymanski, who um, six credits according to Scoggs, primarily the, the two heavy metal uh, sextet uh, albums from 1984, um, and uh, piano Acoustic and uh, elsewhere, I guess, Fender Rhodes, uh, played by uh, Gerald Saw Malice, who, um, eight credits according to Scoggs, um, let's see, well, at least something outside that, oh, yeah, st I guess active into the 21st century anyway, and on um, double bass, uh, Mario's Bogdanowicz. And uh, 42 credits, according to Skog. So this guy's done a few more things. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jess Quartet, um, another pole jazz um, operative. Uh, Quintessence, one of many bands to bear that name. Yeah, a few albums in the early 90s, apparently. Um, uh, and, oh, another quartet under another uh, leading soloist. Oh, as recently as 2013, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, leading his own namesake ensemble. I guess this is supposed to conjure up the excitement, the jubilation, if you will, of, um, having a healthy cash register, having, like you know, lots of money in the till, having, you know, made a, a really successful day of sales. Uh, 
I hear how aggressive that bass was starting to get that brown blah 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 blah. Okay, now we're getting a little bit more ensemble brass. Okay, on um, alto and soprano saxophone on this album anyway, uh, uh, Tadus uh, Jakabowski, um, a credits according to Scoggs, primarily this ensemble, uh, and a few uh, other backup gigs, and um, tenor saxophone Janez uh, Kowalski. Yeah, 11 credits according to Scoggs. Oh, including the big Warsaw band. Yeah. That was a great way for the saxophone to take over. That hit, It hit that kind of like low note, that kind of... Amazing how, how they switch to a to more of kind of like a bluesy sort of hard bop uh, section for the sax solo. Yeah, I, I mean I mean we had that big breezy fast paced more kind of like a, like bebop section for the uh, trumpet solo and. <laughs> It's interesting, it begs the question, is trumpet more suitable for like fast sections and saxophone more suitable for slower, like more like mid-tempo? Drummer's really kicking up some dust here. A thematic element starting to kick back in. Da -na, na 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 na. Now we switch to a different sax and... And once again, like, even uh, re-emphasizing kind of the hard bop element, the slower, kind of bluesier... Yeah, that's why I was always told in jazz history anyway. Like, like uh, bebop of the 40s, uh, particularly like the mid, uh, like early to mid 40s, it started in the early 40s anyway, it was an attempt to make jazz really uh, technical, speedy, fast, full of notes, full of just, to, to, make, to make jazz really musical, to, to pull it away from the sh schmaltz of the big bands. That, that remained really popular in the mainstream nonetheless during the World War II era. And then um, hard bop was like the attempt to uh, kind of return a bit more feel. For, for some who thought that, that bebop was too technical um, and just note driven, too like, you know, music driven, to, to add, add a bit more feel, a bit more of a bluesy element, and so a little bit slower. Yeah, and then um, of course post bop was just kind of like the the outgrowth of, uh, of those various styles, you know, just. <laughs> Now, now it's just kind of like it, the, the density has, has kind of like swelled up here. We got the bass just kind of like spiraling around like we got the, you know, 
Yeah, I love it. At the end of each solo, we, we return to that, that, that theme. Or it'll come back while, while one of the players is still soloing. But they, they each had their turn, you know, in the spotlight and, and then to take it. And then the other two come back in and, and like reclaim, re, you know, pull things, anchor things. Finally, a drum solo. I wonder if we're going to return to that uh, that part from the beginning. Interesting how he keeps on like emphasizing like the one and two. Now there, now there were like some twos there. Wow, really creating a whirlwind here. This guy definitely should have uh, been been on, been on a lot more recordings. Got back. Yeah, I love the the jerkiness here. I mean, most of the track, most of the soloing, the midsection was in four four, but that, this part one two three one two three one two one two one two three one two three one two one two. <laughs> Oh, that was the heavy uh, metal sextet with Kaza uh, Dvorich, uh, translating, of course, to um, Healthy Cash Register from their 1984 first of two albums released that year. Yeah, just simply titled Heavy Metal Sextet. Probably the most ironic use of that name since uh, the Heavy Metal Kids 10 years earlier. But um, that, of course, uh, that band, that English band, shows that name before the term had really been defined. Um, whereas this band, I, I guess, are trying to incorporate some of that heavy metal dazzle energy, you know, uh, into the realm of, well, post-bop jazz. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, and these, on the pole jazz label, which turned out a lot of great talent in the realm of contemporary jazz during the 80s and such. Yeah. For more rubies and sapphires from the um, first of the two heavy metal jazz, uh, heavy uh, of the pole jazz heavy metal sextet albums anyway, the, the, the second one hasn't really circulated. I haven't gotten my hands on it. But, uh, for more from this ruby packed album anyway, see the directory of albums from Eastern European acts. A uh, link in the description below for red hot tracks and purples from Polish jazz bands as well as uh, jazz and jazz rock from neighboring nations. Well, I. Uh, Poland was a particular hotspot for contemporary jazz during the 70s and 80s, so um, one of the more uh, like involved countries, one of the more active, and and I guess they had slightly, they were slightly more, the Polish government at the time was slightly more lenient on its music scene uh, than some of the neighboring countries that were behind me uh, of the Eastern Bloc, yeah, of the former Eastern Bloc, yeah. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, and share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the track we just heard, the layers, the instrument, well, the interplay, the soloing, yeah, the harmologues of it all, who do you think, which solo stood out to you the best? And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled Trimax, most signing off. <laughs>